Some of the channels where we do distribution include uh, forums where we actually get a surprising amount of traffic. It's weird because a lot of web forums sort of have this web 1.0 feel like, oh, that's so yesterday, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Quora, SlideShare, whatever, that's the next generation. But forums are actually fantastic for us. So if you go to boardreader.com, uh, one of the things that I'll often do is search for our, either our name, our brand name, or our competitors' brand names, and I'll find people, forum threads, that are talking about those, and I'll go participate in that conversation, if, if it makes sense, right? So if somebody says, hey, I was using SEO Moz, I was using Open Site Explorer, and I got back this result and I don't understand it, I'll leave a response, and sometimes they're like, oh my god, did you see the CEO of SEO Moz left her? I'm just a guy, but I, like, I, no one should be impressed by that. But they are, right? So they'll, they'll tweet about it and they'll write about it and that forum thread will get, get a bunch of views and it'll be featured. So it's this great virtuous cycle. Uh, you can see there, I, I pulled out most of the forum uh, places that send us traffic. This would be a Google Analytics for anyone who doesn't have it. And you can see, uh, right, so 8,500 visits sent from 117 uh, different forums. And these are I did this the total simple way, right? These are just uh, sources that contain the word forums. So you can tease this out of your web analytics pretty easily. Uh, blogs, we, are, we participate in a ton of blogs. We get written up in a lot of blogs. And blogs do send us a good amount of traffic, but only, only slightly more than, than forums. I actually, I cheated again. This is, this is probably a, a terrible metric. But you get the idea that I could go in, and in fact, I, I did go in and do a more sophisticated analysis of this. And we do get a lot more traffic from blogs. But the, the thing about blogs is that I, I don't just get traffic. We don't just get traffic from the people who write about us in the post itself. We actually get a lot of traffic from the comments uh, of blog posts. So someone, for example, like the, the, uh, the Compete or the Alexa thing, someone will say, oh my gosh, did you see that Path is now more popular than Instagram, which are two photo sharing startups in Silicon Valley. And then somebody else will link to uh, that's total you know, bullshit because, uh, como se dice? No, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's all right. Uh, so they'll say, oh, that's total BS, and then they'll link over to our, our study showing that those figures are inaccurate, and that'll send a bunch of traffic to us and awareness. So participating in those comments can actually bring a lot of value for us as well. Uh, search obviously send us a ton of traffic, so search engines, the weird thing about search is that although it does send us a ton of traffic and we do do, you know, we do a good job with SEO, we only get, I think it's about 36% of our traffic uh, on SEO Moz from SEO, from search engines. The rest comes from all these other sources that we participate in. But I wrote a blog post about this last night um, and actually you can see some comments in that blog post this morning that are uh, kind of angry actually, like almost upset that we're not more SEO only, or that we think that there's this, this idea that you have to be diverse in your traffic sources. But it's my belief that search engines want to reward people who get traffic from all these other places too. Right? That they, they don't want to just uh, link to people, just rank people who have done a really good job gaming their algorithm. They want people who are naturally popular and important. And that's what all these other traffic sources help provide as well. Um, Twitter has been a great traffic channel. In fact, it's for us, it's the number one traffic driver from social media, more than Facebook by almost 2x. And the, I'd be careful about that bias because we usually find it's the other way around with consumer-focused companies, and uh, Twitter or LinkedIn will be the bigger one if you're B2B, business-to-business -business focused startup. So if you have a business-to-business -business product, Twitter and LinkedIn are likely really worth an investment, and certainly if you're a consumer, I mean, no matter what you are, Facebook is worth an investment as well. So I'll, I'll show you our Facebook traffic there. By the way, so Twitter was talking about on TechCrunch, what, two days ago, how like the last three months they've gotten way more popular, um, and how the earthquake in Japan like shot up their popularity, the, the number of people who joined Twitter service. And actually, our data kind of reflects that. Like, the amount of traffic that we've been getting from Twitter over the last few months has been spiking pretty well. Uh, it's kind of interesting to see that. So Facebook, this is, this is our uh, Roger, our Mozbot, and he's, he's wearing his uh, business suit and toupee. Toupee? Yeah. It's a French word, but it probably works. 
So uh, our Facebook sends also has been growing in traffic, but substantially less than Twitter. And surprisingly, I mean, super weirdly, the the value of the traffic is substantially lower. I think people. My sense is that people who are on Facebook, they'll leave it briefly and then they'll come back versus Twitter where it's kind of a, I, was, I go to Twitter to find cool and interesting sites and information and then I will go to them and spend time on them. So the, the Facebook traffic value is very temporal. Uh, email marketing has actually been phenomenal for us. So some of the biggest gains that we've seen in membership, some of the biggest promotions that we've had have come through email marketing. If you are a startup, you need to get MailChimp because the first 2,000 subscribers are absolutely free on the service and MailChimp is uh, A, surprisingly affordable and B, has great deliverability rates and, and fantastic analytics. So I'm, I'm just a huge fan of recommending them. I, I like their service a lot. They also have a great looking interface. I wish that I'm a little jealous. I love their interface. It's great. So LinkedIn has actually uh, not been a place where we've invested a ton of effort, and yet we still see a lot of value out of it. It drives probably about about the traffic, a little less than the traffic that Facebook does, uh, but it tends to be much higher performing. Oh, I didn't put the, the slide in with the details. One of the things that you can do on LinkedIn is to claim your own company page. A lot of people will join LinkedIn for their own personal site, but they, they don't claim their company page and join that, and I would urge you to do that because those pages, A, they pass link juice, and B, then you can share all the content that you put up there. Uh, so slide share, I mentioned that one's been a good source for us. Scribd is the same story. They're essentially competitors uh, along with DocStoc. So those three, I try to upload my slides to all three of those. StumbleUpon weirdly sends pretty good traffic these days. They, uh, a few years ago, they had like four million uh, regular users and today they've got 14 million. So they're one of those kind of quiet growth stories. There was a, a piece in Mashable about how StumbleUpon now sends more outbound traffic, traffic to other websites, than Facebook does, despite having, what, one 40th of their users or something, right? 14 million to 500, 600 million. So uh, StumbleUpon sends pretty decent traffic for us, and it's really because we have interesting content on the site that people will stumble to. Hacker News, if you're not, if you are in the entrepreneurship space, you have to read this site. Like, it's a requirement. I think, I think they do it before they'll give you like the startup stamp on your wrist. Does anyone here read Hacker News regularly? Oh. I, this, is like, this is like where Silicon Valley happens. It really does. In this every day, I probably visit three or four times a day, uh, no matter where I am, on my phone. It's sort of, it's obsessive, but it is a, it's a way to stay connected to what the Valley is doing, even if you're not in the Valley. So I would, I would strongly recommend uh, reading Hacker News every day. And getting linked to on Hacker News can be a fantastic way to get in front of investors, other entrepreneurs, other people in the startup field, software engineers. The, the, the value of the people who come through here, I can't, uh, I can't understate it. But it's super spiky because Hacker News, you have to be voted up, right? You've got to be voted up by other users of the site in order to get listed on there. And so you can see SEOMOS sort of every now and then will have a big spike of a few thousand visits from Hacker News. And it's, it's weird because the first time you get a spike of traffic, it won't provide nearly as much value as the second or the third or the fourth time because those people have seen you before and so they're branded with you. And then when you go to, you know, if I go to a startup event in, I, was, I spoke at something in Los Angeles and a bunch of guys there were like, oh, SEO must, yeah, I, you know, they don't care anything about SEO or internet marketing, but they know us because they read Hacker News. And so that's a great way to get on people's radar. Uh, Quora is actually another really good one for that because it's so Silicon Valley, like tech world centric, and Quora's traffic has been going insane. Like, I think we had a board meeting in, January, and uh, Kelly and Michelle were like, what did you do over the, over the holidays, over Christmas, other than spend all your time on Quora? Because that's essentially where everybody who's in technology was, was spending their time over, over December. So Quora, I've answered a few, like a hundred and some odd questions here, and we actually get good traffic from it. So you can see basically, I started answering questions back here, and now boom, like we're getting serious traffic referring from Quora. So I, 
I, I would urge you to invest there. I think it's, no matter what you're doing, whatever your startup is around, you can answer questions and be perceived as an authority among a lot of these early adopters and market leaders by participating in the site.